Uh, thank you all for coming out to the uh, circle. Uh, we've had having these meetings out for a year and a half. I still have people saying, I've never even heard of this thing. Thank you guys for joining. Thank you for coming out. I want to thank Diversified Marketing for putting it together tonight. And I want to urge you to urge your friends to get to know what we're doing here. What we're trying to do is set up quarterly meetings, bring people out, set up a topic, talk about the topic, bring our donors together, and you know try to shed a new image on the Lake County Democratic Party. But I'm very happy tonight that we have a panel of four esteemed uh, legislators from Indianapolis. Uh, but before we get started, I want to bring up a couple candidates that are running for office that are probably only going to be with us for a few minutes because they're knocking on doors and they're doing things. So first off, I'd like to bring up the vice chairwoman for the Lake County Democratic Party. She's also the Lake County recorder, a uh, good friend of mine, a good elected official that's working real hard. Let's give a big round of applause to Michelle Bannon, the vice chairwoman of the party. Good evening, everyone. It's got a little bit of a raspy voice. We've been out walking in the rain the last couple of days, but uh, that's what's so great about campaigning is that we get out and we go talk to all of our friends and neighbors. And uh, in the office of the recorder, I've been in there since 2010, and we've done great things. We've modernized it. We have uh, put our records online, making it more user-friendly and convenient, as well as we're working hard to protect the homeowners. And we started a property fraud alert. And um, as you can tell just by the things we've mentioned, we have been working very hard. And as a Democratic Party, we need to keep people in office who are making a difference and working hard for you every day. And so thank you for coming out tonight, and I encourage you to tell all your friends. Um, we think it may be a small voter turnout, so we have to work extra hard as proud Democrats to sit there and say, we're not playing games with the name game, because they have a, another individual by the same name as Mike Brown in my race, and they're trying to fool voters into thinking it's someone other than the real Mike Brown. Uh, we have people who in my race who just throw out negative campaigns. As a Democratic Party, we need to say, we're not going to take that anymore. We want good, qualified people in office. And that's where we need you to go out and pull in extra friends, family members, neighbors to come out and vote. Because we have some great candidates on the ballot. We need to make a statement strong this year. So everyone, please come out and vote on Tuesday. And thank you for coming out today. Uh, one thing that Michelle said that I want to echo is, it is going to be an incredibly small turnout. We're all predicting on election day, which means that the party should be stronger on election day this time around. Um, you know, it's a good thing when we clear out the ways. You know, when we clear out the president's race, the president's not running in a primary. It's a good thing when we clear Joe Donnelly out. He doesn't have a Democratic primary. It's a good thing when the governor's candidate doesn't have a Democratic party. It's a good thing when the congressman doesn't have a Democratic primary. And then you look at all the big guys that bring the votes out don't have a Democratic primary, we still have important races left. So that's when the muscle of the Democratic Party has to flex. We need to win these races, the candidates that we've chosen to back, and we got to do it the hard way. we got to go out and get those people to vote every single time, because they're the ones that are voting this time. So um, I, I agree wholeheartedly with what Michelle said, and I echo that, and I hope that our chairman and our precinct committee may, are getting the vote out this time around. Uh, we wanted to bring up a candidate that we knew was going to win the primary because he's uncontested. Uh, and it's somebody that used to be a county councilman who's running for House District 15, which is a district that was drawn up by the Republican majority. And we're going to talk a little bit about redistricting when I bring up this, uh, the legislators. Uh, House District 15 was drawn up anticipating a Republican victory. Uh, too bad for them, we had a very strong candidate that lived in the borders of that district and we convinced him that it was a wise decision, and he convinced his family that it was a wise decision to run, and we got a surprise for the Republican Party. They're not picking this seat up. House District 15 is gonna be in our column, the Democratic column, and we're gonna be calling this man our new state rep, Tom O'Donnell. Tom, can you come up and say something? Thanks, Tom. Thanks, everybody, for coming. I appreciate Tom letting me talk just very briefly with you tonight because I'm excited about this race. We all know what we need to do. The 60-vote majority in the House of Representatives has been abysmal for working Hoosiers and for Democrats. We need to elect a majority in the House of Representatives, and I think we can do it. We've got great candidates all across the state. We've got great incumbents that are running for re-election. 
you guys know what the issues are. The issues are working people, the issues are teachers, and the fact that they've been vilified by the Republican majority and Tony Bennett. The issues are social services, that $100 million is given back to the general fund by Judge Payne and the Department of Children's Services, all while we lose 25 of our most vulnerable Hoosiers died as a result of abuse or neglect. So I'm excited to be running. I'm looking forward to your help and to your support. Uh, the town, just so you guys understand the district, it's a very compact district. It's all of the town of Sherville, all the town of Dyer, south half of Griffith, and the west part of uh, St. John. And it's a winnable district. My understanding is it's 51-49 Republican leaning, but that's a district that we can win if we get out there and work and knock on doors. We're going to be working really hard. I was lucky enough to get a pass in the primary, but I'm energized and I'm excited. I'm looking forward, with everybody's help, uh, to getting out there and winning this election. So I look forward. Please say nice things to people in that district I just told you about, and help me out as best you can in the fall. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. You know, the thing about Tom O'Donnell that we all know is he's the kind of guy that's going to get votes from both sides in this race. He's the kind of guy that's going to slice into that 51-49. I'm telling you, that's a race that we really need to focus on. In addition to keeping the seats that we have right now, we got to win these races for sure. So thanks for coming out, Tom. And last but not least, before I call the panel up, I'd like to bring up the Lake County Clerk, uh, the real Mike Brown, as we like to refer to him. Uh, Mike, could you come up here and say something, please? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just want to remind everyone how important as Democrats that we do what we need to do on Tuesday, May 8th. The Lake County Democratic Organization Executive Board created a standing endorsement for our incumbents. And it's important that we honor that. What I want to remind everyone here is this panel is up here today. These are incumbents. They deserve a standing endorsement. Our recorder, who's done a fabulous job, the real Michelle Faith. <laughs> Our senator, my senator, Senator Early Rogers, who's done a great job. The real Senator Early Rogers. <laughs> we must get out and remind the voters that Democrats are strong, that Democrats are focused, and that we are a party to reckon with. On Tuesday, May the 8th, when the polls close, we will be in the victory lane. So as a party, I want to remind our party officials, our city town chairs, you've been given the task to take care of the incumbents, and I ask you again to make sure those incumbents that have been endorsed by the Lake County Central Democratic Party, make sure we get them back in because they're doing a great job for us. Thank you. God bless you. Well, uh, I'm going to go ahead and call the panelists up, and we're going to go ahead and get the uh, discussion started. So if uh, Senator Rogers, Senator Randolph, Representative Lawson, Representative Candelaria Reardon, would you guys please come up, and we can go ahead and get started. of the legislator, uh, where they represent, and uh, their brief history. So first I'd like to introduce Senator Erlene Rogers. Senator? Uh, good evening. Uh, I'm Senator Erlene Rogers, uh, Senate District 3, and uh, I am an incumbent. Uh, I uh, represent uh, Gary, Lake Station, New Chicago, uh, Maryville, Crown Point, Hobart, Ainsworth, and I think that's it. Uh, but, uh, uh, and I've represented those areas for quite some time. Crown Point is new for me uh, after the redistricting. Uh, but I served on the Gary City Council for two years, served uh, in the uh, Indiana House of Representatives for eight years, and I'm completing my 22nd year in the city. Thank you. And I am a loyal Democrat. 
Thank you all for being here. Um, I am. <laughs> Did he ever name I know mine. It's okay. Mara Candelaria Reardon. I serve in the um, 12th House District. Currently, I represent all of Whiting, parts of East Chicago, Hammond, Highland, Munster, and Dyer. After November, I hope to be serving all of Munster, all of Highland, a tiny part of Griffith, and a tiny part of Hammond. So that would be my new map. I serve on the, um, I'm the only member of the Lake County delegation to serve on the Ways and Means Committee. I serve on the Ways and Means Committee, the Environmental Committee, and the Government and Regulatory Reform Committee. So, those are my assignments. Um, my name is Linda Lawson. I've been a state legislator for 14 years. Um, Hammond's first female officer, served for 24 years and 11 months by this county. Um, served as a Hammond school board member for 12 years and I am currently the um, floor leader, the assistant leader of the House Democrats. Uh, serve on four committees. I stopped going to three of them somewhere in the middle of the term this year. Um, so I don't even remember what they are. It sounds neat, doesn't it? Um, loved my job completely for the last 12 years. Hated it for the last two and we'll talk about that later. Um, my district has been, for the last 10 years, uh, 18 precincts in Munster and the town of Hammond. Um, November, I will be serving in Whitey and Hammond. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name's Lonnie Randolph. I think most people here know me. Uh, I am state senator for the second district, which encompasses East Chicago, uh, now the Whiting, Robertsdale, Hammond section, as well as the third district in Hammond, uh, parts of Gary, uh, Maryville, and Griffith. That's my new district. Uh, there's roughly 162 to 67,000 residents within that area and everything. Practice of attorney have been for the last 30 plus years. Um, currently, I'm doing a lot of work in terms of trial work. I call catching up. One thing about being down in a city or in a general assembly, you get behind on a lot of cases, so you have to spend a lot of time getting caught up. I've been blessed this session because uh, there's no opposition I have in a primary or in a general election. I'm very pleased with that. I'm also very pleased to see my good friend Tom O'Donnell get involved with the general assembly. Tom has been on the county council for a number of years. Um, very well stood, very well knowledgeable, and very diligent and energetic. We need people like that down in the General Assembly. And he's right. One of the objectives that we have as a Democratic Party is to do all we can to try to, very minimal, take back control of the House of Representatives. We need that. And you have already seen the results of us being in the minority there right now. The biggest one that we've got a lot of notoriety about is the right to work issue. Now that's affected so many people in this area. The most important driving force in Northwest Indiana that we've been noted for throughout the decades, since 1910, is unions, labor unions. We as an entity, as a region, we help establish and build the state of Indiana. Indianapolis has reaped the benefits of the labor from the people from this Northwest Indiana. And now it's time for us to start trying to flex our own muscles. And one of the things that we're going to have to do is bring back the real awareness within ourselves, saying how important it is for us to get involved to try to do our share so that maybe our chance in terms of increasing getting the house back will occur. Um, we deserve just as much, if not more, of the benefits that Indianapolis have. We can get that. We have to work together for that. And I'm very happy that to see you out here today. I wish it was more. And I hope that from this point on, all the way through November, that we make this kind of a showing that when it comes to Northwest Indiana, they won't be looking at Indianapolis, Marion County as number one. They'll be looking at Northwest Indiana as number one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think the senator started filibustering on us there. <laughs> All right, uh, it seems like uh, the, so from the introductions that the legislators were giving us, they're referring a lot to a toxic atmosphere in Indianapolis. So that's where I want it. the toxic atmosphere, maybe for us from Northwest Indiana, or maybe it's targeted at just Democrats, but that's sort of what uh, where I wanted to go with this question. Is it 
a toxic atmosphere for Northwest Indiana, or is it a toxic atmosphere for Democrats, or is it both? Who wants to touch that one? We all can? Yeah. Representative Lawson? Um, I used to think that people were crazy if they lived south of US 40, which runs right through the middle of our state south, but now it's kind of 30. You know, um, and that's no reflection on the folks that live in our, our community. But honestly, um, when we during the election of 2010, we had 20 new members of the House of Representatives that are all Tea Party members. So that brought the um, total of 60 Republicans and 40 Democrats. Um, I know that we got lots of recognition last year for being gone for five weeks and lots of recognition this year for being gone for four days. But um, the story is that um, when President Lincoln was a senator in Illinois, he jumped out of the second floor window of the um, State House to prevent a quorum, and that's exactly what we were doing. I'll tell you guys, um, I can't even begin, and, and, and I know that Mara would agree with this, I can't even begin to tell you how bad things were in the General Assembly. Um, I walked off the house floor several times. Uh, you cannot even believe the debate. It's absolutely outrageous. Um, everything is based on religion and morality. Um, everything is based on what's right and what's wrong, according to them. Um, they, they talk about government being involved in everything, but they want to be involved in everything we do. Um, they talk out of both sides of their mouth. Um, it's not a good place to be. The only thing we can possibly do up here is band together for Lake and Porter and LaPorte County. And um, through a Democratic vote in, in November, we can possibly take up or absorb eight or maybe nine counties in the rest of the state just to get John Craig elected as governor. That's the only hope we've got. Um, he's a remarkable man. I don't want to go into a lot of detail about that. But the best thing about John Gregg is that he's going to make all the appointments, whether it's a budget director, whether it's the BMV, whether it's the Department of Children and Family Services, whatever it is, he'll be making those appointments. And I guarantee you, he will handle things fairly. Um, but right now, we're in a very toxic sex cesspool uh, that we just about can't survive. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to go next to, uh, and I'm going to come back tomorrow on another question. So I want to go to Senator Randolph with this one. Uh, do you agree with uh, Representative? Uh, Boston's comments in regards to the House. Do you agree it's the same kind of atmosphere in the Senate? Yeah, not, not exactly. Uh, in the Senate, one of the things that you got 50 state senators, of the 50, you only have 13 Democrats, which means that the Republicans control 37 seats. All you need is 36 to make a majority. So they can operate without us. So we have to take a different tactic in the Senate in terms of different issues bills that we support that's going to be beneficial in Northwest Indiana. So we have to pretty much try to be a little more level-headed in terms of trying to convince them the pros and cons of different bills that come through the General Assembly and the Senate part. And a lot of that comes with experience and knowledge of who to talk to, who to tap, what arms to kind of push a little bit, which ones to kind of pull a little bit. And so you can't get that overnight. I mean, that comes with, with knowledge and experience over time, uh, the many years that you spent down there. And then you get a feel for who is the key person to talk to concerning key issues. And that's the approach that we have to take in the Senate. We can't take like a hammer approach. We have to take pretty much a soft pedal approach and try to do all we can to use our knowledge, expertise, and experience to convince them in terms of which direction we would like them to go supporting a bill. Thank you. I'm going to go over to Senator Rogers now. Um, I know that Senator Rogers is involved in a heated primary, and I don't think she would mind me saying that. It's a, maybe not heated, but it's a primary. It is heated, thank you. I didn't want to put words in your mouth, Senator. Uh, so the Senator is in a, in a race right now, and one of the things that she's touting is her experience and her connections. And I can tell you, as a mayor for the last nine years, and down in the General Assembly for eight of the last nine years, I've seen Senator Rogers with these connections get a lot of things done. So. I'm sort of throwing you a softball here, Senator. Um, you're in the race right now. Why is it important for, but to Northwest Indiana that we retain you as our next state senator? Well, thank you very much. And that's a question I've been asked uh, uh, to answer a lot. Uh, 
as uh, I think Lonnie touched on in some, uh, after you've been down there for a while, you have the opportunity to uh, get to know the different people and where to go to get things done. And what you do is you have a very strong work ethic and uh, you learn to uh, listen, negotiate, and try to come to some solutions that uh, both sides can, uh, can abide by. Uh, you also get a choice of committee assignments. Uh, I sit on the Appropriations Committee, and I think that uh, that, you know, anytime, as Laura alluded earlier, she sits on ways and means. So anytime you're on a committee where the money comes through, then that's a powerful committee. I also am the ranking uh, minority member on the Education Committee. And as you know, Indiana has been involved in a lot, probably too much, education reform. But I'm there to, uh, to make certain that uh, the interests of uh, Northwest Indiana School Corporation are taken under consideration. I also sit on roads and transportation and on the uh, Health Committee. Uh, so I get, so you get choice of some of your better co committees by being there a long time. I'm Democratic whip, which means uh, they've got some, um, I guess they think that I can probably get the caucus together to be in support of issues that come through. Uh, so I think that uh, my experience, uh, and I, of course I, at one time I kind of, I kind of didn't like uh, some, one of the monikers that they called me. They called me early the Casino Queen uh, <laughs> because I was the first uh, legislator that filed a bill dealing with casino gaming. I'm now called the mother of gaming. Uh, but the one, the one, yeah, but the, what I point to, however, is uh, in the years since we've had Riverboat Gaming in the state, it has meant to some total, I think, of $1.2 billion coming into Lake County, and every community in Lake County is the beneficiary of those dollars. Thank you. Thank you, sir. First off, her nickname is a lot better than what I hear people calling me, first off. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and secondly, I've seen firsthand senators' relationships work very well for Northwest Indiana, and she, I think she'd be a modest. She has a lot of respect on the other side of the aisle, and it comes into play a lot in, in important ways. So uh, anyway, I appreciate that. And I want to go to Mara next. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about redistricting. And I wanted to talk specifically with you about it, because a lot of times you hear the Republicans, particularly our governor, talk about how above politics he is. And in reality, when you look at maps that are drawn for state rep districts, for state senator districts, you know politics has everything to do with the way they draw the maps. In fact, in your case, they threw you in with a, a great friend of all of ours, Dan Stevenson, representative also. Uh, so could you talk a little bit about that, if you don't mind? I mean, I think that uh, when, you, uh, when you're in this business and you're in the business of you know, politics, and you can't take the politics out of public service, unfortunately. That's the, that's the, um, that's the way it is. But um, as you mentioned, my district is one of, I think, two in Lake County in Lake County. Um, I know that Chet Dobis was drawn in with Vernon Smith, and I was drawn in with Dan Stevenson, an excellent legislator, served in, served in the House for 18 years and decided to retire. But uh, not only that, I mean, you can look at examples all around the state. I know that, that Todd Rokita had his plan for um, uh, yes, the concise, compact district that uh, didn't get received too well by the by the <laughs> to the victor go the spoiled and I'll tell you they uh, they certainly did draw the maps to favor them and uh, you know you've got the community the small community at the town of Griffith Griffith has three representatives and two state senators so you're not going to tell me there wasn't a little gerrymandering going on it's just part of the process and, and unfortunately um, you know we didn't have control of the house in order to draw those maps my district now has a tiny portion of Griffith I have eight precincts in Griffith and 12 in Hammond and then I have all of Munster and all of Highland so I mean there you know everybody's and, and you know look at Todd Rokita <laughs> he doesn't even live in his district he doesn't even live in the congressional district in which he's running for so you know I guess his plan wasn't received too well. Thank you, Mark. And that's, that is legal under federal law, though. You can have people that don't even live in a district run for a district seat. So, But it's not right. But 
Anyway, um, I wanted to move into the next phase. So I think if I could gather anything from the legislators is how toxic the environment is down south, in the house especially. And not only that, how important it is that we get a foothold in the house or get a governor elected so that we can start to change things. So I think there's one thing I'm taking from everybody. I'd like to shift gears and next go to a quality of life issue in a, in a situation that I think we're being treated unfairly in Northwest Indiana with regards to Klein Avenue. Um, has a Klein Avenue fiasco, I call it, been handled correctly uh, by the Governor Daniels administration? Senator Randolph. My immediate quick simple answer is no. Uh, but we, we did the best we could in trying to get them to support and come up with some funds to rebuild Klein Avenue. By rightfully, the state should have built it with uh, the money that they've already had, particularly when you consider the kind of money the major moves had and the kind of money they're spending downstate. They're spending over, I think the project of, from Bloomington to 169 is probably in excess of a billion dollars now. They've got the, the bridge until connecting Kentucky and, uh, and uh, Ohio with Indiana. That's gonna be like a two and a half billion dollar project and Indiana has to come up with a, a billion and a half in terms of their share. So I see reason why $200 million could, not, could have been earmarked for Northwest Indiana building Klein Avenue. Particularly when you consider the fact that Northwest Indiana has carried the state of Indiana for decades going back to 1910. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in any event, we, we worked out something, and then the governor didn't come up with it, he came up in the paper saying that he came up with this private contract out of Ohio. We developed that, we came up with that individual. The governor took credit for it. But anyway, they offered to build it at their expense. The only condition of that is that they want to be making a toll. We don't like that, but it'll build, rebuild Klein Avenue. Now, people don't like that because they don't want to pay the toll. If you don't want to pay the toll, you don't have to take it. Continue to take the alternative path that IDOC has already set for everybody. But at least we have it in case of a safety like an emergency we had recently with Amico. There was a spillage there. Turns out no injuries. But the biggest issue they had was getting in and out of there, and they were hollering for the Klein Avenue exit. Also, you have to look at economic development. Klein Avenue is a major source of economic development for Northwest Indiana. Key point, RDA is spending 160 million plus to extend the runway at the Gary Chicago Airport, right? The most direct access to that is Klein Avenue going to the Chicago, Illinois market. Governor says he wants to bring attract companies from Illinois and Chicago over to Indiana, right? How can he attract them if in fact he inhibited their ability to be able to get products over here efficiently? Klein Avenue is a major exit. When you talk about LaPorte County, Newton County, Jasper County, when they're dealing with Chicago, the state of Illinois, the quickest route is Klein Avenue. More efficient, less costly for them, which means what, they can maximize their profit hire more people. That's why, so a client, client app is going to be on board, and so we did the best we can to get that done, and uh, I'm very pleased with our efforts, in spite of the absence of the lack of effort from the governor. Thank you. It's, it's about client app also. With, uh, Representative Lawson worked with, uh, with, well, Speaker Greg, when he was Speaker of the House, you were a representative. He's gone on the record on Klein Avenue saying, if he's elected governor, he will rebuild Klein Avenue. First off, Linda is a lifelong Hammond person. Do you believe him when he says that? Secondly, uh, what do you think about the Klein Avenue situation as well? Well, I, I think that John Craig, if he has said that, then I believe that he would, he would do that. My concern is that Governor Daniels was going to get a shovel in the ground before we can get, you know, John Craig elected, which would surprise me because that's how Mitch Daniels operates. Um, I will say that there was money set aside for Klein Avenue with major moves. There were $70 million was set aside for major moves, and all of that money was funneled to I-69. Um, and the thing that's so awful about that is that there's not anybody down there that wants I-69. This is going through farmland. It's going through some of the most pristine land that we have in the state of Indiana. It's going to the National Forest. It's going through the Indiana Forestry. It's going through all where all of the caves are and all the cisterns and everything that's in the southern part of our state. Um, people have fought this tooth and nail. Uh, the town of Bloomington has fought it. Their council has fought it. Um, no one wants I-69. And it is going to cost around $700 million already 
and the, the, the road is not completed yet. On top of that, um, it's gonna save 15 minutes of travel time. 15 minutes of travel time. Um, but they wanted it, and that was one of the things that he said by God that he was going to get done before he left. So I-69 has been a priority with him. It's certainly not Klein Avenue. Um, I think that um, Lonnie mentioned um, when the bridge over the Ohio River uh, collapsed or whatever last summer, it took six months to fix that thing. Six months. That's all it took. Um, but they were able to fix it, but they're not going to do anything about Klein Avenue. Um, I think that every one of you know the comments that our, our governor has made about Northwest Indiana. You've read them in the newspaper when he was in Griffith. Um, he does not care about this part of our state. He just absolutely does not. Um, so, I mean, we're spinning our wheels by wondering why he does not like us. We're a Democrat community. He would like to break us. He can't. He won't. Much to add, other than you know, uh, Linda's right. When you talk about you know, the Ohio River Bridges project, that's a 20 or 30 year project that's getting tons of money dumped into it from major moves. I mean, that's money that should be spread around the rest of the state. And uh, unfortunately, this governor, you know, tried to make Northwest tried. He really did try to make Northwest Indiana his priority. He was up here 20 or 30 times during his election cycle. And guess what? You know what? We still didn't turn out for him. And so, you know, that's not, he's a little bitter about that. And I'm sure, you know, he's actually had a conversation with Erlene about, about that very, about that very thing, that no matter how many, no matter what he did and how many times he came up here, he couldn't get our vote. You know, he doesn't get our vote because he doesn't share our values. That's it, the bottom line, he doesn't get our vote. So um, I would just say that, you know, we've got to make getting a real governor a priority. A Democrat governor who, you know, and, and just for a second, you know, if you know anything about Mike Pence, he makes Rick Santorum look like a liberal, okay? So you better be scared. Be scared. Be afraid. Thank you. Um, I think we got the idea. Do you want to say something about Klein Avenue as well, Senator, or can we go a different direction? Okay. Um, Senator Rogers, you've been doing this for a long time. In your opinion, what is the most important thing you could do in your next term as our state senator? Well, you know, we've all talked about the, uh, the pros of levy, and I absolutely think that uh, we might be able to get that done this time if we stick together as a unit, uh, the legislators from this, this part of the state. Uh, I think they are, uh, come, have come to the conclusion now that there is no punishment that they could uh, give us that would make us adopt a uh, local option income tax. So that was their punishment, and it hasn't worked, and I think we've shown them that it won't work. But in the meantime, I do think one of the criticisms they had about us in Lake County was the cost of Lake County government, and I think that uh, our county government has gone a long way toward uh, uh, paring down on some of the uh, uh, costs of government. Uh, they're down, uh, you know, they're, they're down to the bone. Uh, when it comes to uh, doing what services they need to provide with the dollars they have. Uh, so I think that we can, and I've had some conversations with Lake County officials, I think that over the summer what we need to do is to show them that we have done as much as we could in terms of making certain that uh, we're using our money wisely, that nobody is stealing the money, and that we will continue to do so, and it's time for them to uh, to uh, let us do what we wish to do and, and, and raise the revenue in which in whatever way we wish to raise it. And I think we'll be, uh, at least I know we'll be on the road to being more successful than we have in the past. And yeah, why well, run for John Glenn for governor? Thanks, Senator. Representative Graham, same question. Uh, what do you think is the most important thing you can accomplish in your next term as state representative? I've got a lot of uh, a lot of ideas sort of ruminating. I, one of the things that that I think um, it would benefit my community greatly that I represent is extension of commuter rail to um, Munster and Highland. That's been a really big issue and a, a priority. Getting the overpass built over the railroad tracks on, on Calumet Avenue and, and 45th is also pretty essential. Um, we have a lot of money being spent currently to extend commuter rail from South Bend to the airport, which is 
not a good return on investment, frankly. There's just not the ridership in that direction that you know we have in Northwest Indiana. And the money would be better allocated to our region here to extend commuter rail in, in Munster. So th that's just one of the things that I think is pretty important for my community. Same question. Um, gosh, I hate to answer this with my mayor standing next to me. Um, I think the best thing I can do for my community is stand my ground. Um, I, I'm going to be as realistic about this as I possibly can. Um, we had 13 members of the House Democrats retire and five members of the Republican Party retire, so we lost 19 members. Um, we are down to 40, so if you do the math, we're down to 27 members right now. That's all we have. Um, so, I know. Um, I, I want to also go back to something that Lonnie originally initially said, and that is, um, I would, when I chaired judiciary, I chaired, chaired judiciary for about six years, and I have to tell you um, that the vice chair was a man by the name of Ralph Foley. Ralph is a very moderate, I used to think he was far right, he's not, he's a moderate Republican. And the two of us would sit and, when the speaker, finishes bills and he starts to pass them out and you end up getting your bills assigned to committee. He and I would sit down together in my little cubicle and we would go through the bills together and we would talk about what was good and what was bad policy. What was good policy? What would be good for Hoosiers? Not what's good for Republicans, not what's good for Democrats, but what's good for Hoosiers. And the two of us made decisions together about good public policy. Those are the bills we heard in committee, and we worked together as a team. I have never, ever, ever not been able to reach across to the other side of the aisle. It is absolutely impossible now. So what I can do for my community is to stand my ground, to speak out, and to stand up tall and say that's absolutely wrong. Um, I had bad experiences this year. I had bills that I had worked on for two or three years that I had filed that were taken away, put in a Republican's name. Then I went on as a co-author because the bill meant so much to me. Then they came to me and asked me to take my name off the bill as a co-author. The committee chairman said, I cannot do that. It's her bill. We're going to hear the bill. I promised that we would hear the bill. I'm a man of my word. So the Republican on the committee, chair, vice chair of the committee, came and said, if Linda's name is not off the bill, I'm not going to let any Republicans come to the committee meeting. That's how toxic it is. It's that bad. So there was not a quorum. They couldn't even take a vote on the bill because there's nine Republicans and five Democrats. So it doesn't matter anyway. They've got the quorum and they're going to get the bill passed. Whatever they want, they're going to get. Now, that's not going to say that I'm not going to work on legislation and I'm not going to have things that I don't care about. I will do that. But the most important thing for me to do is stand my ground, to educate myself, stand at that podium, and tell people they are absolutely wrong and they're not representing the people in my district. To give you a taste, I know I, I follow this a lot, you know, to give you a taste of the environment there and in the house, there's a representative from Fort Wayne Representative Morris, who called the, uh, the Girl Scouts a radical organization, uh, a radical left-wing organization. And they're feminists, they're pro, yeah. Right. I mean, this is what they're dealing with, and you got to reason with a person that thinks the Girl Scouts are a left-wing organization. Stop. Anyway, Senator, Senator Randolph said something earlier to me that I wanted to sort of hit on again. He said, isn't it funny that we're spending so much money on the Gary Airport, and we're doing so much to try to make Gary the third choice third logical choice, and the Klein Avenue Bridge, which links the Gary Airport up to Chicago, is not being rebuilt. So it's sort of hypocritical when the state says, yeah, we want that airport to succeed. I brought something like this up last week at the NERSI meeting and didn't make a lot of friends at INDOT talking about the Illinois Expressway. If you look at what we're doing with the Illinois Expressway right now, you're going from 65 straight over basically to the Piatone Airport. So when you look at what INDOT's two major initiatives in Northwest Indiana are right now, we're not rebuilding the Klein Avenue Bridge, and we're building this brand new highway in South Lake County and connecting it right up to the Piatone Airport. Do we really support the Gary Airport? I know I do, but I wanted to sort of kick this to you, Senator, and see what you thought about it. That's a good point. That's a good point. Matter of fact, um, those incidental issues came up when the bill first was proposed. I think Ed Sharpenoff was, was the sponsor of the bill from the House, from the Senate, rather, in terms of that. 
and, 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 and that's a key thing. It's too late now to try to stop the Atlanta, the expressway. But if nothing else, I think our key point would try to be do all we can to support John Gregg so the policies he implements will be counter-effective to that. Because we want him to focus on Northwest Indiana. That's why it's so important. This governor's way is going to be very important. The governor is the one who sets the policies that carries the state. The policy that carries the state are the ones that's going to affect the future, not just for us, but for the kids that comes behind us. That's why it's very important that we get involved in these campaigns that's going on. So when we talk about majority, minority, I mean, we're just not just blowing in the wind. I mean, those are very important in terms of that we try to do all we can to get the House back a majority in terms of Democrat, and try to get some more Democrats in the Senate. I mean, there is tremendous growth and opportunity for Northwest Indiana. We've talked about intermodal transportation. We've talked about rail transportation. We've talked about the tax freeze. We've talked about the airport expansion. We've talked about the land-based casino. We've talked about the trauma center. We've talked about a teaching hospital. Those things are possibilities for Northwest Indiana. But in order for there to be possibilities and be making reality is that we have to get behind people, candidates, who's going to support our best interests and put them in office so they can set the policies and make the decisions that will bring about in reality those things that we're dreaming about now. It can happen. That's why this election is going to be very important, not just particularly the Democrat, the, the primary, but the general election November, particularly the governor's race. Thank you, Senator. I'm going to go over to Senator Rogers and ask her the same question about the Gary Airport. Uh, what do you see and does the Gary Airport have a bright future? Oh, I, yes, uh, we are already, the Gary Airport is already the third major airport, uh, and we consider ourselves to be that. Uh, interestingly enough, I did run into uh, uh, Jesse Jackson, Jr., the congressman, and, uh, you know, he's been uh, touting Piatone for a while, and uh, so we talked uh, uh, in a friendly kind of a way, but uh, in terms of all that we've heard from the FAA and in terms of uh, uh, the support that the airport has in the region, I'm almost certain that we will be that. And, you know, Pinto is, is now a cornfield, and I think it will be a cornfield for a while, and I'm not too certain that the dollars at the federal level will be available to them because of where they're starting from and where we are. <laughs> Uh, I, uh, I think that everybody realizes, you know, that this is the economic engine uh, for the state. And interestingly enough, uh, going along with what Mara said earlier about the governor in his first four years, uh, uh, I remember he had his first uh, staff meeting uh, in East Chicago and spoke Spanish, if you remember. And, uh, right, and, right, and uh, he, uh, you know, you also, I mean, I and I, of course, and all of us are very appreciative that we did get $20 million out of Major Moves for the airport uh, in Gary, and he was very high on that. But you're right, it was after that first election uh, that he took umbrage with, uh, with us. I remember I met him on the states of the Capitol the day after the election, and he was furious. Uh, and basically what he said to me, that there were just two counties that were against him, and there are 90 counties, counties were in support of him. And the margin by which he lost in our county was the margin by which he won in 90 other counties. So I think after that, uh, he uh, just uh, lost interest. And the closer he got to being considered a presidential candidate, the more he moved toward the right. Uh, you know, even you know, with the right to work, uh, uh, legislation. He initially said that, uh, you know, that there was something that Indiana didn't need to get involved with. He also said that about social issues. And so, but I think it was his eye on the presidency that caused him to take that position. And I think I've always thought that, you know, you can't serve well in one office while seeking another. And I think that's what he was guilty of. Yeah, I'm going to start uh, closing things down. I'm going to give all the candidates. No all the uh, representatives uh, a final word. Uh, so Mara, why don't you go ahead and lead us off? Um, well, I could just say that, you know, it is, as everybody else has said, you know, this is good, a critical time for us here in, in Indiana, and we really need to get our voters out of the house. We need to get them, I mean, when we, when we, when we are out there and we're knocking on doors, people are receptive. They understand the issues. They understand that their lives are better. And, 
and with the policies that we that we promoted in, in Lake County and and they know this and they support us. It's about getting translating that support into votes. And we're going to need all of your help as staunch Democrats here in the room to get out that vote. That's really going to be the essential task that we have at hand here. And we, we can't even compete if we're not if we're not present. Now, I would, I would just say I certainly uh, commend uh, you, Mayor McDermott, and uh, the circle of friends. Uh, one of the things that I think we also need to remember, though, is that uh, we need to be supportive of uh, Democrats that have been endorsed by the party in a primary. Uh, I, I'm, I regret the fact that my Senate race is the only contested Democratic Senate race in the state. Because everybody is trying to save their dollars and direct their dollars to the general election, which is important to all of us. So instead, I've had to raise money and, and ask people for dollars for my primary race. So I think it's incumbent upon all of us, not just for me, but for years to come, to show that when the Lake County Democratic Party endorses candidates, then what that means is that it is a victory. And I don't think we will see what we've seen this, this time around. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Thank you very much. First of all, um, I was told to say that Jim Callahan is my um, campaign manager. <laughs> That's great. He's over here. Um, uh, actually, for the very first time in seven terms, I don't have a primary or a general election, so I feel really, really blessed. Um, but I've been out um, to lots of different other candidates' stuff and I'm supporting them. Um, I don't know what's going to happen this coming year, but I do know that I'm a good Democrat and that I will serve this community um, to the very best of my ability. I love Hammond, lived there my entire life with the exception of a couple of college years, but um, when I was on the police department, everybody told me not to buy the house that I live in because it was in the hood, and I did anyway, and I'm very happy. We've been there 36 years, my girls and I. So I, um, I'm planted, and um, Tom O'Donnell, uh, will, one of the workers that's coming up from Indianapolis, if they don't mind living in my neighborhood with a bunch of dogs and me, they're more than welcome to move in. Um, take care of our good candidates. We've got some great ones. Um, our Lake County legislators are a good team. We have our own battles. We're like a good family. Um, we've each had spats with each other. You know, um, maybe not all of us, maybe some of us. Um, Chet left because I don't blame him for leaving. Um, I don't blame Dan for leaving. Um, but we are a good bunch, and we do stick together on the good issues. So um, support us, and we'll support you. Thank you. Thank you. I, um, I, I, first of all, I want to recognize and thank uh, Mayor McDermott, who's our county chairman, for bringing about this forum. Um, I think these kind of forums are very useful. They're useful in terms of creating dialogue between the elected officials, state elected officials, and yourselves. And then sometimes we generate ideas that be beneficial in terms of down the state. But I want you to you all recognize one of the things that we discuss here. Every issue that we discuss was an issue that's beneficial to the entire Northwest Indiana. The rail transportation, intermodal transportation, we talk about the trauma hospital, we talked about the jobs, we talked about the union, labor, all that benefits us all. So we work collectively together. There's communication between the House and the Senate concerning issues. And we try to strategize in terms of help one another try to get bills through, whether it's through the House or the Senate. And so these things are very helpful and useful, and I'm very appreciative of it, and I want to thank the mayor for it. And I'm looking forward to uh, many more like this. And we have more in common than we have differences. So you keep focusing on that, and I think that's gonna bring us through, not just in the primary, but the general election in November, and put John Gregg in that governor's seat. Right. Thank you, Mayor. I'm gonna, uh, I, I know we did before, I wanna see if there's any hot issues that we left open. I think we covered a lot of good issues, but I wanna make sure that we got everybody. I wanna introduce the candidates first off, and I appreciate them coming by. In addition to the uh, Candidates that already spoke, I'd like to introduce Mary Lee Fry. She's running for Lake County Corner. Thank you very much, Ms. Fry. I'd also like to introduce Peter Koenig, running for Lake County Commissioner. Thank you very much, Peter. 
Sorry, Michelle Feynman, running for Lake County Reporter, re election. Did you get everybody? Oh, Tom O'Donnell, running for Stan Rep. You are running. Uncontested. Anyway, uh, any questions out there? Okay, to the representatives, thank you very much for coming by. To the circle of friends, thank you very much. And to DMS and everybody else, I want to remind you that this is on our Facebook, it's going to be on our website, uh, Lake County Dems. What is it? Lake County Dems on our kids? <laughs> Lake County Dems. All right, just just do a Google search and you'll find it, okay? And then click on it, except the jumping donkey. Lake County in Dems, it's a, it's a difficult one. But uh, we do have this, we have a Facebook site. I want to thank Melissa Campbell for, what is the website, by the way, Melissa? LakeCountyIndems.org. LakeCountyIndems.org. Okay, you can click on it, we'll have tonight's event if you want to watch it twice. If you want to watch it three times, you can do it. So. Thank you guys very much for coming out. Thank you again. Let's give them a big round of applause. So let's show this to all. Thank you.